actually had a chance to, uh, I, I think, how many went on the downtown private tour through my phone? Okay, and then how many had a chance to tour Zappos? Okay, cool. So um, I'll, I'll uh, speed through uh, some of these slides then, uh, because some of the information was already on the tour, uh, and then we'll have more time for Q&A afterwards. But for those of you who weren't able to make it on the Zappos tour, we're actually in a suburb of Vegas right now called Henderson. It's about 25 minutes or so from here. and. Uh, actually spread amongst three different buildings. This happens to be the building that uh, I, I, my desk is in. And a lot of people don't know this, but for actually the past seven, maybe even eight or nine years, we've been looking for a place to house everyone under one roof to, to build a permanent campus. And it was surprisingly hard to find any place in all the Vegas Valley that actually could house all of us under one roof and have enough land to expand upon. And then it was a couple of years ago that we found out that the city was moving out of City Hall. They, they were in the process of building a new one. And it just so happened by coincidence that it was within a couple blocks of, um, of, the, of the Fremont East area where a lot of Zappos employees had actually, including myself, had just started hanging out in the past few years. And so uh, this is the City Hall. We're actually scheduled to move in on September 9th, so less than four months away. Uh, and we'll have about 1,500 employees at the time moving into this new city hall. Uh, and so when we found out that we finally had this ability to have everyone under one roof, we started touring different campuses, uh, corporate campuses like Nike, uh, Google, and Apple, and they have these amazing campuses. Uh, I remember I was at the Nike campus and, and checking out, and they had a uh, running track that went around one of the buildings, and inside one of the other buildings, they actually had an on-site pub, and uh, we thought to ourselves, we need one of those. <laughs> and, then, um, and actually, it turns out there's jail cells in the city hall, so we've been talking about turning that maybe into a speakeasy bar or something. And um, I think the name of it should just be Bars. And, um, <laughs> and so, anyways, as we so we were super excited, and, and we started as we're inspired by these. Uh, great corporate campuses and asked our employees to email us uh, suggestions for what they would like to see in their dream campus and people told us they wanted an on-site gym and uh, on-site pub and so on but the number one request we got from employees was actually doggy daycare more than human daycare and so um, and, and so we started getting all these suggestions and then we realized that uh, one we couldn't physically fit all the suggestions that our employees wanted onto this campus. But then the other thing we, we realized, and as we started thinking about it more, was that all those other campus, campuses that I mentioned were great for employees, but were actually really insular and didn't really integrate or contribute to the community around them. And so we started thinking, well, what if we turned it inside out and took an approach that was more like NYU, where the campus kind of blends in with the city. You don't really know where one begins and the other ends. And some of you, uh, if you haven't already, hopefully over the next few days, will uh, discover some of these places around Fremont East. This is an area of downtown Vegas that most tourists don't know about. Uh, as it turns out, mo you know, most people think about all the big casinos on the Strip. That's actually technically not even in the city of Las Vegas. And then for people that know about downtown, usually they know about the overhead light show and the old casinos. But actually in any of these bars and uh, coffee shops and so on, uh, there's actually no gaming. And, uh, and, and it's actually the only place in all of the Vegas Valley where you can, you can actually bar hop and go, go from uh, one place to the, to the next. And so, um, and so then that's actually what spawned us to actually uh, form Downtown Project, which is separate from Zappos. Uh, and and you know, thinking back on, on Zappos, Zappos is about to turn 14 years old now. And we, for us, the number one priority of the company has been company culture. And our whole belief is that if we get the culture right, then most of the other stuff, like delivering great customer service or building long-term during brand or business, will just be a natural byproduct of that. And we started out in San Francisco, and we moved to Vegas about nine years ago. Uh, we had about 90 employees at the time, and about 70 ended up moving with the company. And in retrospect, that was actually that move was actually one of the best things we could have done for our company culture because none of us knew anyone else in Vegas, so we were all kind of forced to hang out with each other uh, after work and on weekends, and that actually really took our culture to the next level. And part of the reason from the Zappos perspective we're so excited about this move to City Hall is uh, if, if we can get our employees to live, work, play uh, within walking distance of the office, that'll actually be uh, 
the next quantum leap for for our company culture. And so that is, so, so downtown project uh, was formed to hopefully help employees do that, and also at the same time while benefiting Zappos, also benefiting the, the community and, and the ecosystem. Um, so one of the goals is to have everything to, you need to live, work, play with, and walk in distance. Another is to make it the most community-focused large city in the world, and probably the place you would least expect it. And third is to make it the co-learning and co-working capital of the world. And co-working, for those of you who may not have heard of it, was this concept that started out in San Francisco maybe eight or nine years ago, where a bunch of tech startup companies worked in the same physical space, uh, but side by side uh, for different companies. And what they found through that process was that a lot of innovation and productivity uh, increases happen because people would overhear each other's conversations or they uh, and then they'd start collaborating or sharing ideas and since then the now the it's been so successful that the concept of co-working has spread all around the globe there's literally thousands and thousands of co-working spaces all around the world and not just in tech but also in fashion and culinary uh, arts and photography and, and really you can imagine anything that you can build a community around and so we're taking that same uh, approach here and we actually have a fashion incubator if you guys get a chance you should check out Stitch Factory where uh, designers go and uh, there's sewing machines and, and other uh, equipment there for them to make their own product or we actually had Cirque du Soleil there designing the latest costumes for their, their new show and there's also photo shoots going on on there all the time. And so the whole concept is rather than focus on kind of the short-term ROI that most real estate developers focus on or, or they have short-term cash flow needs, we have this concept of maximizing ROC, uh, return on community, but then there's also this other thing that uh, we actually do a lot of thinking about, and this is a term that we stole, we stole from Jim Collins in his uh, latest book, Great by Choice, of really thinking about how do we uh, think about this concept of ROL, uh, return on luck, and how do you actually uh, accelerate ser serendipity and, and design an environment where uh, these serendipitous interactions happen on a continuous basis. And so the big bet is really by focusing on these three C's for downtown project collisions, community, and co-learning, that that's going to lead to not only happier and luckier community, but actually innovation and productivity increases. So um, you guys saw the, the post-it note on, on my wall in my apartment. And these are the different criteria. A uh, unique first or best is actually really important for small businesses that we want to invest in. We have a lot of people that say, oh, I've seen this great, uh, this bar concept or restaurant concept in seven other cities, and you should do one in Vegas as well. And we actually say no to those because we want to have our, have our own identity. Uh, and this whole idea of being owner-operated, uh, we, we don't really, have, we're kind of anti-master, top-down master planning, which is how most real estate developments are, and, and really we want it to be organic and driven by the entrepreneurs. So uh, we don't say, oh, the downtown needs a, needs a flower shop. Instead, we find entrepreneurs, and, and maybe there's someone whose uh, lifelong dream is to uh, retire 10 years from now and open up a cupcake bakery. And we basically say, well, rather than wait 10 years, we'll invest in you now, and really uh, we think of it as helping accelerate their dreams. So um, hopefully you guys will all have a time, have a chance to eat at a, this place called Eat, which is half a block from here. It's actually owned and, and, and run by Natalie, one of the first small businesses that we invested in. And, uh, and she was working at the Hard Rock Casino for 10 years as a chef, was actually about to leave town, and then we found out her lifelong dream was to open up, up a breakfast and lunch place. Invested in her, and this is her place under construction. Um, oh, I'm actually not a, not a great PowerPoint person. So I'm very proud of this transition. <laughs> and, um, and so you can see uh, you can see her under construction, and then um, and then she opened up six months ago. Is doing double, actually I think almost triple her original projections. The place is packed uh, every day now when you go over there. Uh, this is this was literally still a check cashing place. This is uh, on Fremont Street between Las Vegas and Sixth. And it was still a check hashing place last July. This is what it looked like on the inside. And then Sarah, her dream was to open up a boutique clothing store. And now you can go in there. That, this is actually, kind of, she describes this as a hangout place that happens to sell clothing. It's become this kind of daytime hub where people co-work there during the day. Sometimes there's DJs at night. And it's normal for people to, in the community to just kind of walk, walk in. Uh, every day or sometimes actually several times a day just to just to hang out 
Um, you guys have probably heard we're opening up a shipping container uh, project, which is right across the street here. That's set to open up in, I think, October of this year. There'll be you, the dome you can actually see now. There's a 40-foot uh, tall praying mantis that shoots out 12-foot flames from Burning Man. And uh, it'll be daytime, nighttime on, on the top there is, is going to be an outdoor live music venue. Um, and then different food and beverage options. It's also, I think we can, we're thinking of it as like a small business incubator. And the focus of it is actually the center area where we want to create a kid's paradise. And th these are some old renderings, but the latest concept is actually to build this 25 foot tall Swiss family Robinson type of tree house for kids to play with and, and slides going down and so on. And the idea being make it such a fun place for kids that they're begging their parents to go back every weekend but for parents of kind of avoiding that Chuck E. Cheese effect where they, and where they can actually hang out with other adults uh, and enjoy the live music, enjoy their wine and cheese, and so on. And then also we want to build educational activities into all the different retail concepts so that imagine a kid could, uh, you know, depending on how old they were, they could get a passport and then go to the flower shop and uh, learn something flowers or, or arrange them and then go to the next retail store and for each uh, place there could be a different ten minute activity for them to, to learn something on. Uh, we're doing a shared bike program. Actually, there's Project 100, which is also where we're, we announced we ordered 100 Teslas and doing this shared car program downtown as well. And, and that goes back to awesome. one of our goals of actually getting people to, to get rid of their, their cars. And I think the first deliveries of the Teslas are coming uh, in a week. So pretty excited about that. Um, on the second floor of the coffee shop, there's the tech library, and, the, and this has actually been, this whole tech scene has been the fastest growing part of everything we've been doing, because two or three years ago, the tech scene was non-existent, and then this library we funded and was built, put together by volunteers, uh, started, once we, once it, once it was built, we found that there were actually all these tech companies in, in the Vegas area that each thought they were the only tech company. It turns out they just didn't have a place to gather. And so now if you go there Thursday nights, uh, there's a lot of tech companies out there. You should also check out Work in Progress, which is a, a co-working space that opened up, uh, I think, a couple months ago. And and, uh, and there's a lot of companies that are working out of there. And um, and and actually in the past, uh, this is one of the companies that, that first moved here. But actually in the past year, we've had uh, 20 or 30 tech companies relocate from other states to downtown Vegas. <coughs> And, and, and so that's been really surprising to see how quickly companies are deciding to move here. And they move here for two reasons when we ask them. One is for this uh, feeling of community. Uh, and this is actually one of the most community-focused places I've ever lived. I, I, I grew up in the San Francisco area, but I've never lived in a place where the bar owners hang out in each other's bars just to support each other. And you have that same type of vibe within the uh, entrepreneur and tech startup community here as well. And the other reason people decide to move here if, if they're entrepreneurs is really this whole idea of thinking of the city as a startup and how many opportunities do you have in a lifetime to help shape the future of a major city. Uh, we're partnering with Venture for America, which is kind of like Teach for America, but for college graduates that want to become uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, partnering with Teach for America, where they're relocating their Vegas headquarters to downtown uh, and on top of doing what they are already do. Uh, opening up, this is in August, an early childhood center uh, that's initially six weeks through kindergarten, but eventually will include K through 12, teaching kids creativity and entrepreneurship and using the latest neuroscience uh, research. So um, you can see some of the plans for that, and that's a couple blocks from here. Uh, if you guys are ever in town on a first Friday, it's an, uh, would definitely encourage you to come check it out. It's an arts and music festival that we took over a little over a year ago, and it draws about 20 to 25,000 people each month. And, uh, and we actually had our first urban burn. We, uh, we partnered with the founders of Burning Man to do our first urban burn. Uh, and, and so we're also partnering with them to bring large scale art from Burning Man to downtown Vegas. This is um, about 45 feet tall. It's gonna go on a 10 foot pedestal and is going on uh, about four or five blocks on Fremont Street down from here. And um, so that's the arts and education side of it. And then there's uh, the real estate side of it. And one, this is a book I would definitely recommend. I think it's in most of your rooms, but if not, uh, would definitely recommend getting it. It's called Triumph of the City, uh, written by a Harvard economics professor that uh, researched cities from all different time periods. And it's an interesting book, even if uh, you weren't involved or, or we weren't involved in any of this uh, urban redevelopment stuff. 
because uh, he researched cities from all different time periods, Rome, New York, Detroit, and looked at why some thrived and some didn't. And uh, actually, a lot of the findings in there are, are, are kind of counterintuitive, uh, and it's actually guiding a lot of how we're thinking about uh, our project for, for downtown project. And one of the interesting stats is every time the size of a city doubles, productivity or innovation per resident increases by 15%. But when companies get bigger, productivity per employee generally get, goes down. So part of our goal from the Zappos perspective is trying to avoid that fate and, and actually trying to create this weird hybrid between corporation, community, and city that's never really been attempted before at, at this scale so that we can avoid that fate. And that 15% increase in innovation and productivity is kind of the accidental historical average. So I think if we're actually purposeful about thinking how do we accelerate serendipity, how do we promote collisions and community and co-learning, that we can actually get gains much greater than just that 15%. And the ingredients for that to happen are 100 residents per acre, uh, combined with street level activities, so all those post and notes and small businesses for people to collide in. And then the third is probably uh, the hardest, but also I think the cheapest and the one where you can get the most leverage out of is uh, this culture of openness, collaboration, and sharing. Because if people are twice as likely to talk, each, talk to each other, then maybe you only need half that residential density. And so that's something that in our investments, we really look for, whether it's on the tech side or in the small business side. Uh, we have this additional requirement where it, it does, in addition to being a good investment, uh, the people in it have to care about contributing to community, being part of something bigger than just the actual business that they're in and then that helps uh, reinforce this third point over here. And so uh, we do a lot, and what's interesting is a lot of the stuff that we've learned from uh, our, the past 14 years at Zappos and from the co-working research uh, actually now applies to the city level as well, and, and we didn't realize it at the time, but, uh, but for example, at Zappos in our offices, we're thinking about how do we get employees to talk to each other, running to each other more often. And if you look at office density, how closely we pack our employees together, for example, average density in the US is about two or 300 square feet of office space per employee. In our Henderson offices right, right now, we're at 120 square feet per employee. And for our new city hall, we're actually targeting sub 100 square feet per, per employee. And the reason for that uh, is because research has shown that when you sit twice as far away from someone in an office environment, you don't see them half as often. You see them half as often squared, so a quarter as, uh, as often. So it's, it's similar to how the inverse square uh, gravity law works. And so we, we think about that in, in, on the city level as well. We also think about how do we, prior, we actually prioritize collisions over convenience. So in our Henderson offices right now, we actually, the previous tenant let all our employees go through whatever door was just more, more convenient for them. We actually lock all the doors, and even though the parking lot is in behind the building that I'm in, uh, we force employees to walk all the way around the building through that one front door in order to get more of those uh, serendipitous uh, collisions. And for City Hall, uh, this is actually a sky bridge on the left side, and then you can't, and then off to the left of the picture is actually the parking garage, and the city employees used to just park in the parking garage, go into the sky bridge, and then they wind up on the second floor of the building. But we're actually shutting down that sky bridge and forcing employees after they park to go out onto the street and, and then into the central plaza, which then uh, promotes more collisions, not only with each other, because you think of that central plaza as the lobby, but also with the, with the city itself. And so the big bet is basically, and, and I don't even really think of this as a bet, you just, this is just a partial list now, but you get all these different diverse groups that are creative and entrepreneurial and and energetic and so on in a relatively small space colliding with each other and statistically the magic will just kind of happen on its own. The research has shown that most innovation comes from something outside your industry being applied to your own and what's super exciting about what's happening in downtown Vegas is I don't think there's any other major city where you have all these different uh, industries and, and companies actually talking to each other because we're bringing together uh, folks from the tech startup world and from the fashion world and manufacturing. And even within manufacturing, there's car manufacturing and apparel manufacturing and there's arts, music, education, or we're building a creative writing community. And, and so all these different communities that normally are kind of segregated in other cities uh, actually are in a small space talking to each other. And, and we are trying to curate it so that uh, their bias is to share and collaborate. Uh, and so one of the things we realized 
over the years, over the past few years, is that culture is to a company as community is to a city. It's the exact same concept, just at a different scale. So uh, we kind of unwittingly then you know, think about how do we get employees to collide more often. I realize that a lot, that's really been preparation for all the stuff that we're approaching, uh, think about for downtown project. So I think most of you are staying at the Ogden and uh, collectively between downtown project employees, Zappin's employees, and, and the companies we've invested in, uh, in, in the crash pads that, that we've set up, we're leasing about half the units in there. And that's actually been our best uh, best best tool because uh, when when people come, they end up meeting each other, like you guys are meeting each other, and then also the the um, uh, okay, occasionally the people that come, we do ask them some of them to give a talk to the community if they'd like, and I th I'd say 95% of people say yes, and so this is a special event here, but actually. Uh, there's people giving talks, uh, we call it, if you go to downtownspeakerseries.com, you can see uh, there's all sorts of people giving talks to the, that are free to the community uh, all the time. And there's some weeks where there's 15 or 20 different talks going on. And so, um, so and this was totally unintended. Uh, when Originally it was just, let's just get people to come and, and, and visit us and, and check out downtown, check out the local coffee shop, check out the local bars and so on. And this, this room actually became set up because there were all these uh, talks that became more and more popular. And we've had all sorts of interesting people come and talk, including like the producer of Batman and Morgan Spurlock, who did Super Size Me, uh, a geneticist who figured out how to uh, combine the DNA of a firefly and a plant to make a glow-in-the-dark plant, and people talking about 3D printing. And, and uh, I think there's a few people in this room that have also spoken on, on the stage before. So. Uh, it, you know, t all these TED and uh, the South by and, and Summit series, there's these great conferences where half the value is uh, you, the people you run into and the other half is the content. Uh, what downtown Vegas is becoming, uh, and completely unexpectedly, is basically it's like we're throwing almost like a mini TED conference every single week now. And so that's been, a, that's been pretty exciting. And so uh, on the corner of Fremont and Las Vegas Boulevard, the, probably the most prominent intersection in all of the Vegas Valley, rather than opening up a nightclub or a bar or a restaurant or McDonald's there where we know we could make a lot of money because we own that building there, that's where we're building the uh, Inspire Theater where these talks will move into uh, later this fall. So it's uh, under construction right now. Um, and then these are just some of the renderings. And, and around the talks in, in, around the theater in that same building, there's also going to be different co-working and collaboration spaces, and uh, there'll be a rooftop bar and, and so on. So um, so that's that. And so it used to be we would encourage everyone to come during First Friday because it's a great uh, event to, to go to, and then we realized that we uh, sometimes were sold out three or four months ahead of time. And so we started theming the different weeks. And so every first week of every month is still First Friday week. Second week is now a tech focus week. Uh, we have tech startups and uh, VCs and angel investors show up to that. Third week of every month is a fashion focus week. And, and that just happened last week where we have different fashion designers tell their story of how they got there and, uh, and, and, and so on. And then fourth week is we call it catalyst week. It's almost like a, I would describe it as more like a younger version of TED. And uh, this is the Stitch Factory, uh, in the, the fashion incubator I was talking about. And, um, and so I'm gonna get back to that in a minute. And so when we first started this project, and the project is only about one, less than one and a half years old right now, uh, our original thought was, okay, we have the Ogden, which has 275 units in there. Uh, and I think at the time it cost 135 million or something to build, and we thought, okay, this is gonna be uh, we're going to have to s invest a lot of capital into building residential. Uh, and, but it seemed kind of weird for, well, if you're going to spend $135 million, that's only going to get you 275 bedrooms. It didn't seem like a good use of capital. And so we started actually rethinking that original formula of, of what we were going to invest in and start thinking about what is the value of a resident that's out and about in the community. So, so take someone like me, for example. Uh, I'm out in a collisional way, uh, call it three or four hours a day, and by collisional, meaning that I might run into someone random that, that I know or don't know and start a conversation. So it could mean I'm at a restaurant or a cafe or a bar or just walking, uh, 
hanging out on, uh, walking along the street. So I'm out and about in a collisionable way three or four hours a day, times seven days a week. I travel a lot, so I call it 40 weeks a year. If you do the math, it works out to roughly about 1,000 collisionable hours a year. As, and, that's, and at the end of the day, you know, we care less about whether they're in a resident, but really how many hours is someone collisionable out and about in the community? Because if you're a resident here and you never leave your apartment or home, then that's not really a value either to, to the community. And so uh, this is a guy named Jake. He, we met him, I think about a year ago, and he actually, at the time, had the most, success, most uh, successful fashion-related Kickstarter campaign. Uh, he raised almost $300,000 on Kickstarter. He actually just broke that record a few weeks ago uh, with selling, he started another Kickstarter campaign that was selling American-made hoodies and raised over a million dollars on Kickstarter for, for these uh, hoodies that would last 10 years. And so we're like, great, we're uh, starting this fashion week thing, would love for you to move to Vegas, space out of New York, and he said, no, you can't move to Vegas because his significant other is out there, his factory's out there, and so on. Uh, and so we started brainstorming about other ways you can actually participate and contribute to the community. And we basically were saying, well, we're trying to launch this fashion focus week, maybe you can just come for that one week every month and during that time, and, and he's already done this a couple times, give a talk and, uh, and mentor other fashion entrepreneurs and you know, have office hours and, and so on. And so he agreed to that. Um, and so uh, oh, this is his million dollars on, on Kickstarter. And so start thinking about, okay, well, instead of what is actually the value of a purposeful visitor like Jake, who now during the weeks he's here, he's hanging out at the Stitch Factory and giving talks and, and so on, and start doing the math on that. So he, when he's out here, he's out in about call it 12 hours a day times seven days a week, uh, 12 times a year. If you do the math, it actually works out to about 1,000 collisional hours a year now. So uh, we thought this was really interesting because not, we still want people to move here, but now we have this uh, additional thing that we've been calling subscribing to downtown Vegas that can really lay, we can layer on top of that and, and really accelerate uh, all the, uh, com not only the community side of it, but also the co-learning side of it. And, uh, and that's been pretty exciting. And, and so that's part of the reason why we think we can actually do stuff a, a lot faster than can be done in most other cities for revitalization. And so really going back to this formula of 100 residents of needing these three ingredients, we started thinking, well, instead of 100 residents per acre, really what we should think about is it should be 100,000 collisionable community hours per acre per year, which works out to 2.3 collisionable hours per square foot per year. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Um, and I like to tell our real estate partners just to freak them out. But, but, but it, it actually is just is a, is an interesting uh, new way to look at real estate and, and what small businesses to invest in. So look at, at a restaurant, for example, like Natalie's, you know that that's 3,000 square feet and is in her 3,000 square feet and we know she's getting, I call it 40,000 uh, people going through that. Um, I forget if that's how many have already gone through or, or that's what she's on track for for, for the year, but, but either way you can do the math and, and start basically thinking about is the real estate paying for itself in terms of the uh, collisional hours per, per square foot. Um, and so Really, by our big bet is by focusing on these three C's, collisions, community, and co-learning. What we want people to say about downtown Vegas, whether they're living here or they're subscribers or just visiting, uh, is that downtown Vegas will make you smarter. Which is probably the last thing that people would expect from anything related to, to, to Vegas. Um, and, uh, and that's part of the reason why it's, it's uh, pretty exciting. That's part of the reason why we're uh, partnering with, with Jim on, on, uh, on, on this whole uh, accelerated learning thing. And so there's been kind of this, there's a separate company called Delivering Happiness, which was spun off of the book, but whether it's Zappos or Delivering Happiness or Downtown Project, there's kind of this common theme of inspiration that runs through the different companies. And um, what I find really exciting about Downtown Project is we, we actually just passed a threshold in human history where and this is just in the past couple of years, and, and I think most people actually don't know this. For the first time in human history, 50% of all humans now live in cities. And within our lifetime, it's gonna become 75%. And so, 
what's exciting for me about Downtown Project is if we can make Downtown Vegas a place of entrepreneurial energy and inspiration and, and learning and, and a place, and probably the place where people voted least likely to succeed and use and open source what works and doesn't work on the Downtown Project website, and then there's really no excuse for any other community or city. And so our hope is that it'll help inspire other uh, communities and cities. And, and for us, it's kind of like the um, story of the four minute mile, where you know, for the longest time, people thought it was impossible to run a mile in under four minutes. And then, in a, or they thought even if you did, you'd, as soon as you cross the finish line, you'd probably die or something. And, uh, and then in 1954, this guy named Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. And the funny thing is, within a, in less than a year, other people broke the four minute mile as well. And it wasn't that nutrition was better on earth that year, it was just that people believed it was possible. And so um, what we want downtown Vegas to be is to be the four minute mile before the world. And um, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, I think it was from a, um, executive from one of the major ad agencies said, a great brand is a story that never stops unfolding. And, and part of what makes me excited about all the different things we're working on is, I think the same is true for a company, uh, same is true for a city, same is true for a community. And so the next few years here uh, are super, super exciting because I can't wait to see what unfolds. Thank you very much.